All right, video number three. We got a comment from Roderick. He says, let's be specific as possible. Some call them Kardashian and some or, and I'm sorry, and or those who go by Tallman. Or you could say Cabal that still is behind much corruption today. Any non-believer is on the same level in many ways. Well, you know, they, whether it's uh, these Kardashians that go by the Talmud or the you know non-believer, they all reject Jesus Christ. So, uh, yeah, you're right. They're on the same level in many ways. All right, and so here, let's before I move on. Let's take a look at some examples of, uh, let's see, uh, oh no, what am I, uh, what am I looking for here? Uh, here we go, and so, but he answered and said unto them, why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? All right, and honor not thy mother or his father, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. So, uh, let's see. And he said unto me, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. So, uh, what he's talking about here is the Talmud. The Talmud is a collection of Jewish scribes, if you will. Uh, essentially, um, the you know the thought level or whatever you want to call it. The belief is that what these guys write is of significance and importance, and whatever they say essentially trumps what the Old Testament or the Book of Moses and Bible, if you will, what the Bible says. So the Bible doesn't matter. It's what they write in their Tolman that matters. Right? So, uh, so that's what he's talking about there. And then, of course, we can... We can relate that as well to the Catholic Church. See, when I first became a believer uh, back in the early 2000s, I was visiting numerous churches, and one of the churches that I visited was the Catholic Church. And I was able to talk to the preacher there, and I was asking them, uh, what's the difference between... Uh, your church and other churches, and he said that the tradition, you know, he said something, and, and I was like, well, the Bible says this, and he says, well, the tradition of the church trumps what the scripture says. And so, uh, you know, that right there is, is an example of uh, how these Jews and Catholics are in the same boat. All right, you go back to when Jesus uh, was here, and it was the Jews that demanded that he be killed, but it was the Romans who had him killed. So they worked together to kill our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and, you know, a lot of what's going on today is reflective of what happened when Jesus was killed. All right, so uh, let's go on to this one. You know, the offering of a goat or ram to the temple was like sharing your wealth with God. You set aside some of your wealth as a blessed offering. It later became an idea of blessing from God, forgiving. Jesus canceled sin for us. He gave what was his to give, to give your Life for someone is the ultimate homage to our Savior. We, living in the flesh, are created in sin. It is God's intervention in life that shows us the path to redemption. <clears throat> All right. Uh, 
So, okay. All right. So if I'm, if I'm, uh, if I'm understanding this correctly, it's, it is God's intervention and intervention in a life that shows us the path to redemption. Yeah. 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 It's Jesus and what he did. That's the path to redemption. You believe on the Lord Jesus, thou shalt be saved. Right. So it's not what we do. It's what was done for us. To give your life for someone is the ultimate homage to our Savior. So that's kind of that's kind of an odd statement because Jesus gave his life for us. So we don't have to give our life for Jesus. We're not greater than him. See, okay, so yeah, I'm not necessarily disagreeing, but the wording is kind of, it seems kind of off to me. Uh, so if you could uh, elaborate your point for me so I understand you better. But um, to uh, support this a little bit, so let's go. Um, what is that verse that I'm thinking of here? Uh, no greater love. Uh, let's see. And therefore does my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. Right there. Greater love has no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. And of course, Jesus laid down his life for us. And uh, you know, it's, you know, some great stuff, really. You know, so, <clears throat> uh, let's see in the sent uh, henceforth <clears throat> excuse me henceforth I call you not servants for the servant knoweth not what his Lord does but I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father I have made known unto you and the scripture was filled with saith Abraham believed God, it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. So we are friends, not just servants, right? Um, so, uh, you know, I, to me, it just, I'm not sure what, if I'm misunderstanding you, uh, you know, the offering of blood and bowls is no good. Let's see what, what the Bible says. Uh, oops. Regarding that, blood of uh, bulls. Oh, excuse me. Let's see what the blood of bulls says. All right, and we go. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. So, uh, if there was any doubt, uh, they would offer the these uh, sacrifices to take away sins, and then Jesus instead offered his body as a sin as a uh, to take away sin once and for all I'm not sure if I'll be able to find that verse I'm thinking of here and by which by the which will we are sanctified by the which will I'm sorry by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So Jesus died once for all to cover all sins, past, present, future, forever and ever. All right, so his body, his laying down, his body for us, laying down his life for us, saves us. And all we have to do is put our rest in him, put our trust, put our faith in him. Believe in the Lord Jesus and thou shalt be saved. It's really simple, right? All right, thanks, Brian. Appreciate that. Thank you for addressing my comment. My main thing was to say the present and future sin is not acceptable to God. Oh boy. My main thing was to say present and future sin is not acceptable to God. Well, you're right. If you're going to continue to rebel, oh boy. That's what I was afraid you were going to say. If you continue to rebel, well, you got troubles. <laughs> 